<laughs> I'm a day person. Julia Louis Dreyfus, as far as I was concerned, was the key to the success of the show. The rare type of uh, comedian who is sexy and cute and funny uh, all at the same time. Very hard to find that combination. I remember when I saw her on Saturday Night Live, she didn't get to, to do too much on Saturday Night Live, but when I saw her, I said, boy, there's, that's a person that should be uh, a star because she, uh, you know, has all these qualities that are so rare in a comedian. Why, do you have a fake? Of course. Really? <laughs> you fake? On occasion. And the guy never knows? Yeah. How can he not know that? Because I was good. <laughs> I guess after that many beers, he's probably a little groggy anyway. <laughs> No. Is that? You didn't know. Are you saying <clears throat> I think I'll have a piece of cake with me? Well. You faked with me? Yeah. You faked with me? Yeah. No. Yeah. You faked it. I faked it. That whole thing, the whole production, it was all an act. Not bad, huh? <laughs> what about the breathing, the panting, the moaning, the screaming? Fake, 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 fake. Larry had a great word for her. He said that she gives the show luster. And I thought, that's a great word for what she, and she did. She, she was like the pearl that smoothed over all this kind of rough, kind of low-minded behavior of the other three characters. <laughs> I'll get going. Uh, stick around a while. It's early. We'll order Chinese. Before they picked up the four episodes, NBC wanted to add an uh, ongoing character that would be a female character, you know, to, to play with the, with the three boys. We only had really three characters. Right. You know, and we thought, oh, one more couldn't hurt. Right. So it looked like a TV show. Yeah, right. They made, you know, two uh, substantial changes between the pilot and, and the next four episodes. One was, um, uh, the character of the waitress that Lee Garlington played at the coffee shop was, in essence, supposed to be the fourth character. Decaf, you sure this is decaf? Where's the orange indicator? It's missing. I have to do it in my head. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. And Lee came in one day, having rewritten her big scene, and handed it in to Larry. And, you know, in her defense, she had no idea how awful a mistake that was. You know, her, her days were numbered <laughs> from that point on. But it was probably a, a good cut. I don't know that, that being tied to a waitress in the coffee shop would have meant much. But the other big change was the addition of this character of Elaine. Women were flooding into our offices every day. They, they must have seen scores of women uh, for the part. And I used to watch Jerry and the various ladies come in and read, come in and read. They were not seeing anybody that they really felt rang their bell. And then I mentioned Julia, who, had, um, who I had worked with on my one season of Saturday Night Live. I had an, an overall deal with Warner Brothers Television to um, create my own show. February 1st of that year, she became available. The day after I got out of the deal, quite literally, I got these four scripts were sent to me. Um, by my agent, and I read them, and I saw that they'd been written by Larry, and of course I knew Larry, and I thought it was really incredible writing. It was really different, really different than sit sitcoms were being written right then. And, but the part wasn't very big, and so it was kind of a, well, I don't know, because it was a really, it wasn't a big part at all. But I really did think that the writing was such a cut above that I was intrigued. I called, orchestrated a meeting. We had her in to go in and meet with Jerry and Larry. Jerry came in, and I remember he was eating a bowl of cereal. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, I sort of recognize that guy. And I saw Larry, and that was nice to see Larry. And we just it was very relaxed. So Jerry and Julia and I met in my office and talked for about a half hour. And we sat on a couch, sort of just like this, and we just read the scene. Jerry came out of the reading with Julia and said, Julia is Elaine. That's it. That is it. Come on, let's go do something. I don't want to just sit around here. Okay. Want to go get something to eat? Where do you want to go? I don't care. I'm not hungry. <laughs> we go to one of those uh, cappuccino places. They let you just sit there. What are we going to do there? Talk? <laughs> we can talk. 
I'll go if I don't have to talk. <laughs> well, just sit there. I think there were two different seasons, perhaps even three, in which I took Larry aside. We were not servicing all the characters equally, and Elaine, Julia, was actually not being serviced well. And she actually came into the room one day where Larry and Jerry and I were there, and she was weeping and said that she wasn't being used in the show. I think most writers and most people who came in on the show hoping to write a script had a much easier time dealing with George and Kramer ideas because they were such outrageous characters. I didn't think I was getting enough uh, com real, really meaty comedy stuff. I had stuff, but it wasn't like the really funny stuff. And not that it was a competition, but you know, that is what, you know, gets me going. So, um, and then things have started to happen slowly. It was a slow process though, I have to say. And I always thought that if Julia didn't have a strong story in an episode, then it was never going to be quite as good. You'll appreciate this. Snapple? No thanks. <laughs> I was talking to this guy, you know, and I just happened to throw my purse on the sofa, and my diaphragm goes flying out. <laughs> so I just froze, you know. Uh staring at my diaphragm, you know, it's just lying there. So then this woman, the one who sold me this hair thing, she grabbed it before the guy noticed. So, I mean, big deal, right? So I carry around my diaphragm, who doesn't? I mean, like, it's a big, big secret that women carry around their diaphragms. You never know when you're gonna need it, right? <laughs> the really interesting thing about the show is that not only does it tackle these racy issues, but it does it in mixed company. The mandate back then from Larry and Jerry was write Elaine as if she were a guy. And it makes everyone feel very comfortable about these things because Elaine was like one of the boys. Come on, how was your date? Oh, the date. <laughs> the date. Yeah, how was it? Interesting. Really? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Why, what happened? Let's see. How shall I put this? Well, just put it. He took it out. <laughs> he what? He took <gasps> it out. Julia is the best comic actress that I've worked with. She had the combination of a face that the camera just loved. Beautiful, beautiful face. But she had the courage to twist it in any direction that she wanted to. She wasn't afraid to be unattractive. She's foaming at the mouth! And not only that, her physicality is evidenced by the, the dance, the famous dance. I mean, we were whining, we were dining, we were dancing. <laughs> She's very courageous that she would take that chance to be, you know, physically unattractive. Put your pants on. What's the big deal if we don't Here, make it? We'll just on. go tomorrow or the next day. Oh, you have your ticket. You have to go now. We'll never make it. Don't say that. Well, it, it takes 45 minutes to get there. It takes 45 minutes to get there. That'll only leave me five minutes to get to the plane. Shut up and pack! And then what if we don't make the plane? You'll have already left. Then what do I do? You're talking too much. Where's my sweater? What? My brown sweater. What? What sweater? My brown sweater. I got a brown sweater. Here, you want a sweater? You want a brown sweater? You got a brown sweater. It's not mine. I can't take your sweater. It's brown! I never saw a process with Julia when she worked. She just did it. She was very comfortable and she just let it swing. You know, you can never predict the way Julia was going to read lines. Well, she brought um, just tons to the character that wasn't on the page. All I know is he doesn't like games and he doesn't play games. You know, he has too much character and integrity. Uh-huh. And what is his stand on abortion? <laughs> what? What is his stand on abortion? choice. How do you know? Because he, well, he's just so good looking. <laughs>
We would always go late shooting, and if it get past 10 o'clock, I was no good. I'm, I'm an early person to bed, and I get very, very laughy after 10 o'clock. You know, the only reason I'm doing this is because you went with Audrey to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no point in going. Julie is laughing. <laughs> Okay, can we go? Uh, no, yes. she's laughing. Yes. Right now. We can go. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, waste from waste everyone's time. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. What? What do I need this for? <laughs> I'm gonna get a four by four. <laughs> 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 Let me just I can get this right at him. I gotta write at him. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, really? yeah. No, I'm sorry. I promise I'm good. I'm sorry. <laughs> the only camera left is the video assist. Everything else is gone. So, you know, eventually these people came, and, you know, somebody gave them mouth to mouth. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Do the end. Yeah. Do okay. It. Give me the key. Why didn't you just give him mouth to mouth? <laughs> All right, let's cut. That's okay. Every time she would try, it would just get worse and worse. Who put you up to this? Was it her? All right, wait a minute. I think you've got it backwards. My George isn't clever enough to hatch a scheme like this. You got that right. <laughs> the hell does that mean? <laughs> The hell does that? <laughs> Come on, okay, let's go, let's go. <clears throat> that means whatever the hell you want it to mean. You're saying you want a piece of me? <laughs> you saying you want a piece of me? Please <laughs> say that one more time. <laughs> You saying you want a piece of me? <laughs> you saying you want a piece of me? I can drop you like a bag of dirt. You want a piece of me? You got it! Yeah! We had another great outtake run, also involving Julie Louis-Dreyfus and Jerry Stiller. I told all my friends about it. Everybody knows. <laughs> I stopped the shirt. I'm sorry. Jerry, I'm sorry. Babe. sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was another example of when oh, I couldn't get through it, when he fell and he made that scream. Ah! <laughs> he went up his head. <laughs> oh, I still can't believe how funny that was. Anyway, I can't talk about that. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> ah, this is terrible. Fat. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's good. All right. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> hey, she's still rolling. Oh, she's rolling. It's the blooper. Okay, go. There we go. Okay, okay. go. All right. All right. Go. <laughs> yeah, she's. <laughs> yeah, I'm eating alive. Okay. Okay, go. Come on. We won an Emmy, you know. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and the Emmy goes to Julia Louis Dreyfus. Julia Louis Dreyfus has been nominated five times for her role as Elaine on Seinfeld. This is her first Emmy. I was surprised to win because we weren't like coming home with armfuls of Emmys every year. So, as a matter of fact, I remember being very cavalier about it when we went to the Emmys, so that when they said, and the nominees for, and they cut to me, and I went, oh, please, oh, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I figured I was a guaranteed loser. A lot of people say that our show is about nothing, but um, of course, it's been about plenty of something for me. And um, it's been the greatest job of my life, and I am so grateful to Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David and Jason Alexander and Michael Richards and Andy Ackerman and all of our writers in Castle Rock and Glenn Pettick and NBC and my 
wonderful husband, Brad Hall, and my beautiful son, Henry, and my parents who are here tonight. Thanks for raising me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and to Bill Melamed, and to all of you, thanks very much. When I think about making the show, I really think about how much we laughed. That's actually something we all shared. We all enjoyed making each other laugh and then laughing and not being able to keep it together and not being able to get through a take. And um, we enjoyed the process very much. I miss that part of it a lot.